back to WOL Radio. Good morning, Dr. Welsing. Yes, good morning. How are you, Mr. Nelson? We're doing great. You, you know what? We, we discussion earlier this week about what happened at the uh, University of Missouri. Uh, the, the, the football, well, he wasn't actually the football player. The, the young man that was on the hunger strike. He came out that his father was was a millionaire. He's rich. So, and the question was, can the uh, and we just put it this way: the black bourgeoisie, and I don't mean it as a pejorative, because uh, obviously we don't begrudge anybody who's wealthy uh, if they've earned it, you know, legally. But can can they really identify with the urban struggle? Can they identify with some of these students who who are struggling in, in classes? And should should they be part of the struggle, or or should we look at them sideways? I do want to get your thoughts on all this. Well, I'm not a believer in separating. I think that uh, my analysis or my understanding of the system of racism, white supremacy, would do everything possible to have black people engaging in uh, distrust and warfare with one another as opposed to focusing on uh, racism white supremacy. Do you see, it's like if you said, well, who is the bourgeoisie? How much money, what annual income does one have to have in order to be classified as a bourgeoisie? Somebody might say, well, Dr. Francis Wilson is in the bourgeoisie. Or her mother, who was a teacher, and her father, who was a second-generation physician, is a part of the bourgeoisie. Do you see, but... Right. Hold that I'll let you finish that That on the other side. We have a traffic update coming 10 after the hour. 800-450-7876. That's the number to call. Speak to Dr. Francis Chris Welsey. We're taking calls after the traffic update on 1450. W-O-L, where information is power. Good morning. This traffic update is brought to you by GEHA Dental. We'll start with delays on 295 heading southbound. Very heavy now as you make your approach to Eastern Avenue heading down toward Pennsylvania Avenue. Also, we're looking at uh, the accident on the freeway eastbound at Main Avenue. Left lane so crowded with activity on both shoulders. Your delays begin from the 14th Street Bridge and sluggish on the inner loop from 50 to Ritchie Marlboro. Gather around the savings at your local food line this week for MVP hot sales. Haas avocados are just 99 cents each in select variety of Cheetos or Fritos corn chips or buy one, get one free. Limit two, life's better with the lion, food lion. This weather update is brought to you by the American Association for Cancer Research. The American Association for Cancer Research, finding cures together. Please support cancer research by donating today at www.aacrfoundation.org. Today, cooler with a mix of sun and clouds. Highs reach in the mid-60s. Right now, partly sunny at 48. I'm Tony Thornton for News Talk 1450 WOL, where information is power. Moving today or tomorrow and not sure who to call? Well, your worries are over. Ted's Moving and Hauling at 301-254-8221 is your one-stop place to call when you need to move from your apartment, home, or office. Ted's Moving and Hauling is one of the best with experience and professional movers to handle all your needs with no job too large or too small. Ted's can do it all. Call now to find out more. 301-254-8221. That's 301-254-8221. Need something hauled away? Ted can do that too. Ted's Moving and Hauling is one of the best and with some of the best prices in town. So if you need to move uptown, downtown, or out of town, call Ted's Moving and Hauling today at 301-254-8221. That's 301-254-8221. That's Ted's Moving and Hauling, moving you from your home, office, or church. Call Ted's today at 301-254-8221. Those of us who were around in the 50s and 60s struggling, many of us have gotten tired, and we let the enemy have his way. Well, I did my best, they'll say, and you all take it now. I'm just going to sit down and relax or retire. I have never seen a lion retire from being a lion. I may not bite as hard as I used to, but I can still bite. 
Don't miss the Farrakhan Speaks broadcast. This and every Sunday at 8 a.m. until 9 a.m. right here on WOL 1450 a.m. Where information is power. That's the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan on the air this Sunday at 8 a.m. If you missed last Sunday's message, you have to hear him this Sunday. Don't miss it. Real Talk Radio in the AM. Carl Nelson on 1450 WOL. 13 after the hour with Dr. Francis Chris Wilson, the psychiatrist. You know her from the ISIS papers. I'm going to call and speak to Dr. Wilson, 800-450-7876. And we're looking at the uprising at the University of Missouri. And people pointed out that the young man was, was from a well-off family. And, and there's a question whether he could be... Could he identify with a struggle? And I just call the urban struggle. But you know what, what I was what I meant, Doctor Wilson. I'm gonna let you finish up on, on that task. And also, if you can tell us about the resurgence of, of activism on college campuses, because it seems like for a while it was pretty dormant, and now we've seen that uh, you know these these college students are, are, are rising up and finding out they do have some power w- if they unite. Well, uh, I'm certainly uh, my last uh, lecture at Howard. I dedicated it to the young black people who uh, were rising up and protesting against racism, white supremacy, and uh, saying that it's a model for all black people. They were, in my view, demonstrating their respect for themselves as black people, focusing on the historic dynamic uh, that has been against us for the last 500 years. Uh, Trying to keep a focus on racism, white supremacy. And in my view, the system will do anything necessary to keep black people focusing on something other than racism, white supremacy, like focus on each other. Find... uh, you know, on the plantation where there might have been five or ten white people in the big house that could be overwhelmed by the number of enslaved Africans. But if you keep them focusing on each other and trying to decide, well, which one did the master give two pieces of fat back to and fight that one, do you see? So... I'm always a little bit confused when people talk about bourgeoisie. Who are they talking about? Do you you see what I'm saying? And then Dick Gregory was just talking about a gang member uh, participating uh, with uh, President Nixon or President Reagan. So what are we talking about? Anything other than focus on the colossus of racism, white supremacy. But, but, you know, speaking about what, what Greg talked about, the gang member, some, some, sometimes some of us, once we're selected by the, the majority community, if you will, the whites, uh, we think we're special. We, we think we're different. And just like you mentioned, you know, we got that extra piece of fat back back in the day. How, how do we get our people to understand that we're still the, the same? They, they, they still treat us the same, but, but you know, it's the divide and conquer game they're playing with us. Well, again, to understand strategies uh, employed by the system of racism, white supremacy, uh, Neely Fuller talks about four possible responses on the part of victims of racism, white supremacy. Victims can submit to it. They can cooperate with it. They can resist it, and they can try to destroy it. And I say that in the fourth category, those are people who gave their lives, like Martin Luther King and Malcolm X, the people who struggled up to the point that when they were told that their lives were going to be taken, they kept moving against the system. But there always are going to be people who will cooperate or submit to the system. Submit to the system is we will pay you thus and so amount of money for you to harm your people. 
You see, all kinds of people always fall into that category. So if you know that there are different postures that people will take when they have been victimized over time, and I say if there has been a complete annihilation of black self-respect, then uh, people whose self-respect has been annihilated, then... uh, you know, then money becomes what they respect. And so the system that will make that mentality will use that individual. No, or that just... collective, but, you know, to pinpoint and say who, you know, who is going to be that person, if, if you make that person or those persons the people that you're going to focus on, as you blind yourself to the people who may have made that person lose their self-respect. And I say this is this is what we need to focus on, but again, the colossus of racism, white supremacy, strikes fear. Uh, Dr. Dr. Welsing, do, are you referring to, I guess, the actors on Scandal and also Empire? Uh, those are the ones you say submit to, to the system of white supremacy? I say that by and large, I I think that they don't even understand the system. See, if I say, well, how many black people actually understand the system of racism and white supremacy and can give it a definition? I would say fewer than 10% of black people. This is why your program is so important, because you have people come on the show and, you know, people who try to talk about what racism and white supremacy is all about. Do, do you see? But as long, I mean, in 500 years, for 500 years, we have been victimized by the system of racism and white supremacy. Look at what's happening to the black people on the continent of Africa. It's white supremacy is again overtaking that continent. You see pictures of black people in the Sudan that look just like the people who were in the Nazi concentration camp being starved to death. The people who have Ebola, the people who have HIV AIDS, Black people are being decimated every place in the world, whether it's Haiti, whether it's South Africa, or whether it's here. Who knows, you know, when they start talking about ISIS is going to do something to the people in Washington. If it happens to black people, if any harm comes to black people in Washington, D.C., I will say that that's ISIS identifying itself as a system of racism, white supremacy. Right. And you know what? I think more and more people are, are, are understanding what you're saying. I, I remember this the season starting on Back to Scandal and, and uh, Empire. You know, they're having all these uh, viewing parties and, the you know, the people can't get enough and they're tweeting while the show is going on. And after you started breaking it down, uh, the ratings have been dropping. Uh, I think people are, are really waking up. I, I see that and I hear them refer to the system of white supremacy. I, I even hear people that you wouldn't even dream of of putting that phrase in their mouth and, and, they're, and they're repeating it. So they may not totally understand it because not everybody understands it because every time we come on, there's, there's got to be a few who, who, who really don't get it because they, they think it's about whites being superior. They don't understand it. it's a total global system. But having said that, I'll let you respond to that on the other side. We'll take some calls for you at 22 minutes after the hour. 800-450-7876 to reach Dr. Wilson. Your calls next as the big show rolls on from 1450 WOL, where information is power. Hello, everybody. Time to focus on your dental health. Tune into the Healthy Teeth and Gum Show with Dr. Peter Marai every Monday at 12 noon. It's time to take back control of your oral health. Diseases of the gums and teeth can cause major health problems and even death. So be sure to tune in every Monday at 1230 right here on WOL, where information is power. If you have dental needs, contact Dr. Marai at 301-567-9844.
This is Barbara Armwine. Be sure to tune in to Igniting Change every Tuesday from noon to 1 on WOL 1450 AM. I will provide provocative and empowering information to ignite change and inspire action in achieving racial justice and equality. It really is up to all of us to be and to ignite the change that we so desperately want to see in our neighborhoods, communities, our cities our states, our nation, and the world. Each week, I want you to join me and my special guests to learn how your activism matters in realizing a more just and equal society for all. Ignite change with me every Tuesday from 12 to 1 p.m. Together, we can make a difference. Visit BarbaraArnwine.com for more information. Kids are going to get bumps and bruises as they grow up. It's part of being a kid. But we can protect kids from serious injuries. Did you know that preventable injuries are the number one cause of death for children in the United States? But the thing about preventable injuries is that they're preventable. This is a problem we can fix. There are little things we can do so kids can grow up to do big things. Learn more at safekids.org. Radio in the AM. The number one morning show. Number one on everybody list. Carl Nelson on 1450 WOL. And thank you for staying with us, folks. 24 hour after the hour with Dr. Francis Chris Welsing. And Dr. Welsing, what, what can you tell folks who still get it construed? They, they, they don't, they, they always uh, parse out the words superior. And they think that's what you're talking about, that white people are superior. And that's not what you really mean. mean. Okay. I'm just asking if you can break it down a little more. See, I would say this that uh, sometimes it takes people an, a long time to understand a new concept. And as I've said many times on the radio, I've had people come up to me. It could be in the safe way. It could be just on the street and say, look, are you Dr. Wilson? thought you were. Uh, I have to tell you this. When I first heard you 20 years ago, I knew you were crazy. Now I understand what you're talking about. And so sometimes it takes a long time for people to understand what somebody might be saying. I used to think back in the late 70s, I thought, okay, the minute we start talking about racism, white supremacy, Everybody will come on board and everybody will all at once understand it didn't work like that. And so it takes people a long time and then there will always be people who don't agree with a given person's concept or understanding. And I say that's okay because I used to take the position if I have to end racism and white supremacy all by myself, and I used to envision the the kind of image of a person having a chain connected to a huge aircraft carrier. That person is in the water. One person pulling an aircraft carrier and turning it around. And so it doesn't take everybody understanding something. Sometimes it takes a few people understanding something at a given point in time. And if, you know, somebody might say, well, I disagree that it's a system of racism, white supremacy. I think that it's something else. Well, fine. Each person, nearly fully, talks about the victim's guaranteed qualification to have any point of view that they want to have. I'm just in the channel of people who focus and understand that we are dealing with a system of racism and white supremacy and that it's important to understand what that system is doing to us and how it has eradicated our self-respect in many ways. 
And so our struggle is to understand the system and do the repair work on our self-respect because nothing happens if self-respect is not in place. That's my understanding. I'm a psychiatrist. It's just like in terms of helping. I went into psychiatry to help black people in their mental health. And when I realized, raising the question, what's causing black people to be mentally ill? It wasn't something that was taught in medical school. It wasn't something that was taught in psychiatry training, three years of general psychiatry training, two years of child psychiatry training at Children's Hospital here in Washington, D.C. Do you think any of those programs were focusing on the mental health of black people? Not one. But I said to myself, as a black person, I want to understand what is making black people mentally ill. And that's when I stumbled across Neely Fuller saying, it's a system. And it's a system to maintain the power equation of white power over non-white powerlessness. And because in my own mind, I don't have another colleague in psychiatry, white or black, who made it their mission to understand what is causing black people to be mentally ill. That's above and beyond what we were taught to focus on. And so that was my focus, and it remains my focus. And I see the evidence in my office every day that I'm practicing. When people say, you help me understand, you help me understand what happened to my parents and why my parents related to me in the way that they did that may have been destructive. Talk to two men this week who were beaten by their parents. But understanding what was happening to us as black people and how we were beaten in slavery and how we learned to call each other niggers and all that abuse, hundreds of years being enslaved under white supremacy and how we have been programmed to be destructive towards ourselves, destructive towards our children, destructive towards our people, how the system of racism, white supremacy, and what the logic of it is. The logic of it is is that people who classify themselves as white are a tiny minority of the people on the planet. In the 15th century, when they circumnavigated the globe and found out that the vast majority of people on the planet were people of color, that they, up in Europe, were the only people who had white skin. And when they realized that that was a genetic recessive trait, and if they made it with the people of color, that white could disappear. They made critical decisions. We have to dominate the planet. That's what we see happening on the news. All this business about ISIS, this is white people saying we got to dominate the planet. we got to have all the resources. We have to keep killing and manipulating these people of color on the planet. We have to do whatever is necessary to stay in power based on skin color because that's the only way that we can genetically survive. So we see it happening. And I say it's not a matter of hating white people. We don't have time or energy to spend hating white people. No, it's just like sitting at a chessboard and understanding the game or it's like playing football or basketball what is the game? What are the rules? What are the goal objectives of the game? What are the plays that are required, offense, defense, to be victorious? 
what is, see again, what is our analysis of the problem that we are attempting to deal with? It's just like I have a relative who went to the hospital. What's the first thing you want to know? Doctor, what is wrong with the person? What is their diagnosis? What does the diagnosis mean? All right. Hold that thought right there, Dr. Wilson. We've got to step aside for the news. When we come back, we've got people who want to talk to you, but I want to ask you, are we always going to be fighting the system of racism and white supremacy, or, is, or can it be totally eradicated? I'll let you answer that on the other side. We're going to step aside for the news next on 1450. W-O-L, where information is power. Good morning. I'm Mike Fortier. Here's the latest from News1.com, brought to you in part by Lead Safe America. Did you know that childhood lead poisoning costs the American taxpayers more than $50 billion a year? Visit leadsafeamerica.org to learn more. Commuters on Metro will see increased security for the unforeseen future. Riders can expect more canine units sweeping through stations and random bag checks. Metro Transit Police Chief Ron Pavlik says there will also be random surges of police officers patrolling around peak hours. And the randomness is key. You know, we don't want to do the same thing every day, uh, day in and day out. You really want to create a layered approach. The decision for increased security comes from a video released by ISIS that directly threatens the district. Officials with Carroll County Public Schools suspending all field trips to D.C. due to that threat. The video released Monday appears to show the militant group praising the Paris attacks and threatening to carry out similar attacks here. According to the Carroll County Times, a school security official says there are no credible threats, but officials are erring on the side of caution. A 15-year-old Maryland boy in hot water for charges of burglarizing a house in his neighborhood and leaving a disgusting calling card. The owner of a home in Laurel installing a camera system after a break-in last month. It captures the teen inside the residence just last week swiping cash, eating the victim's food, and performing a sex act in their refrigerator. The boy now being held at a local youth facility after admitting to both break-ins. A woman in trouble with D.C. police following a barricade situation in downtown D.C. Police say Sophia Dalk of Springfield, Virginia is charged with assault on a police officer while armed. Police say the situation began early yesterday morning when they responded to a call about a woman with a weapon in an office building on K Street Northwest. Police say no injuries were reported and it was not an active shooter situation. This report brought to you in part by Mothers Against Drunk Driving. If your plans include alcohol, plan to designate a non-drinking driver every time. Together end drunk driving. Visit mad.org. That's M-A-D-D dot org. I'm Mike Forty Urban. You're looking for news for Black America. Go to newsone.com. This traffic update is brought to you by Compassion International. We'll start on DC 295, still pretty heavy now, heading southbound from just after the DC line past Eastern Avenue in toward Pennsylvania. I-295 also sluggish coming up from Oxon Hill past the Naval Research Lab and continuing toward southeast. Now westbound on the freeway, some slow volume from the bridge in toward the 3rd Street Tunnel. Suitland Parkway inbound, stop and go from Silver Hill to South Capitol. Compassion International releases children from poverty every day through sponsors like you. Find out how at Compassion.com slash radio. This weather update is brought to you by the Foundation for a Better Life. Winston Churchill's words serve his country in the face of defeat. Today they inspire us to reach for our own victories. Commitment Pass it on from the Foundation for a Better Life at values.com. Today, cooler with a mix of sun and clouds. Highs reach in the mid-60s. Mostly cloudy tonight. Lows near 50. Right now, partly sunny and 51. I'm Tony Thornton for News Talk 1450 WOL, where information is power. Your voice can now be heard. Y'all ready? Yeah. yeah. With Carl Nelson weekdays from 6 to 10 a.m. on 1450 WOL. And thank you for staying with us 24 away from the top of the hour with psychiatrist Dr. Francis Chris Welsing telling us about the system of white supremacy. Dr. Welsing, before the news, the question was, can, can it be defeated? Can we defeat it uh, on a personal level or as a collective level? Or do we need to do that? Or are we always going to be in a, uh, a system where we're in a struggle? We're, we're going to keep fighting. And, you know, the, I hope to continue. The struggle continues all the time. I will say it depends on where we take our self-respect as black people. If we take our self-respect to the critical level where if something is harming us, we will do everything possible to prevent that and to stop it from happening. So, so I uh, say no, it de- but again... <laughs> If I have to do it by myself, now that would be tragic. 
at a certain level. Francis Welsing is the only person determined to see that white supremacy is brought to an end by studying it and analyzing it and figuring out what to do about it. But no, it's like if we decide as a people, when young people talk about black life matters, that's a statement of black self-respect. Black life matters. And we as older people should be saying, well, it's kind of tragic that we didn't complete the work so that they could focus on something else. But we didn't complete the work, and we should all be thinking, wait a minute, we better get on the case so that not generation after generation after generation is being turned into trash by the system of racism, white supremacy, or the system promoting negative images of black people as buffoons and clowns and animals and bitches and hoes and gangsters and thugs. Is that who we are supposed to be? We should be saying, wait a minute. We weren't put on this planet as the mothers and fathers of everybody, including white people who are mutants from us. We weren't put on this planet to be the trash and always the worst off in any category that using the terminology white supremacy, that's what white supremacy is. The people that they fear, that they think can cause their genetic annihilation, that they genocide those people. Now, that's what white supremacy is. Just like white supremacy is, if they make a decision, we're moving all of the black people out of the urban centers. The urban centers are supposed to be for intelligent and creative people. That was in the Washington Post yesterday. The urban centers for creative people. but moving the black people out. That's white supremacy. Washington, D.C., where the black president sits, it's a black female mayor, but they've got an agenda to push the black people out and a program to put bicycle trails so that black parishioners cannot come to the black churches because there's no place for them to park. And just like the article said, it's happening all over the country. It's happening in Chicago. Move the black people out. Philadelphia, move the black people out. That's white supremacy. It's not black people moving white people out. No, it's people who classify themselves as white deciding they want to gentrify the cities, but they don't want black people to be there. That's racism, white supremacy. All right. 800-450-7876. bunch of folks want to speak to you. Got questions for you. Let's go to line two. Brother Jay is calling us from the district. Brother Jay, you're on with Dr. Welsing. Thank you. Thank you for taking my call, Dr. Crest Wilson. You're, my, you're, you're the best. I love you to death. Oh, I love you to life. Thank you. My question is, <clears throat> I teach 
and I educate the youth. I brought this topic up with the youth. I asked them, this is a group, about maybe 15 youth. I asked them, what does racism and white supremacy mean to you? It took them at least two minutes to answer that question. After they answered it, and it was a warm answer, I would say, there was another two guys in their same uh, age group coming down the block, and I decided to stop them and ask them what was racism and white supremacy. Well, they told me that racism and white supremacy was Trayvon Martin. It was Eric Gardner. And when I asked them if there was any other signs of racism and white supremacy that plays in their life, that plays out in their life, they said no. It doesn't. So my question is, how can I bring racism, racism and white supremacy, how can I bring that closer to their vision so that they can see it? Because they don't see it. The younger generation don't see racism and white supremacy like I do or my generation. I'm in my 40s, young 40s. So we see it clearly because I guess because of how my, my parents grew up and what they instilled in me. So my question is, how can I bring it to life for them? Because they don't see it. They don't see the system. Like you said, it's not it's, it's, it's not a white people thing. It's a system. But how do I show them a system and they can't see, they can't see that when they open up their... Right. I tell you what, Brother, Brother Jay, thank you for your call. I'll let Dr. Wilson respond on the other side. We've got to take a quick break. 15 away from the top. They are. Folks, you two can get in on the discussion with Dr. Francis Chris Welsing. Reach out to us at 800-450-7876. Your calls next as the big show rolls on from the capital city on 1450. W-O-L, where information is power. What's wrong, Tina? Where are you coming from? I am just coming from the dealership getting my Mercedes-Benz service. Do you know it cost me $500? $500? Girl, you should have gone to Magic Benz in Hyattsville. Their A services are only $250, and B services start at just $250. They are my premier specialist and have up to 40% off dealer prices and 100, yes, 100% satisfaction guaranteed. But how did I miss this? But there's more. They offer professional services, Tire replacement, balance and rotation, engine cooling system flush, body work for all Mercedes, and more. Their oil changes are only $99. Michelle, say no more. What's their info? It's Magic Benz at 4716 Baltimore Avenue, Hyattsville, Maryland. Their number is 301-985-2676. Or go to their website at magicbenzservice.com. Thank me later. No, I am thanking you now. When the need arises for a funeral repast or a place to hold a memorial service for your loved one, call the New Horizon Hall of Elegance, located at 2209 Varnum Street, Mount Rainier, Maryland. They will take the worry out of you having to handle one more detail, giving you time to focus on family and friends. Call 301-277-5922 to find out more. That's 301-277-5922. That's the New Horizon Hall of Elegance, ready to serve you in your time of need. Okay, so, Sarah, I'm dropping you off at Emily's? Yep. And Josh, you're going to? Soccer, Dad. Soccer practice. Right. Oh, by the way, I just wanted to let you know when I pick you both up, I'll be wearing my short shorts. What? No! Yep, and my dorky dad hat, and I'm going to do my dad dance for all your friends. They'll love it! Seriously? Why? Because I like my short shorts. Of course, I could be talked out of it if you guys would just buckle up your seatbelts without giving me a hard time. It's important to get your kids to buckle up for safety, no matter what it takes. And sometimes, all it takes is your parental powers of persuasion. Okay, okay, we're buckling up. See, all buckled. Good choice. I'll just have to do my dad dance at dinner time. What? What? No! Do what you have to to make sure your kids are wearing their seatbelts, even on short drives. Never give up until they buckle up. A message from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Visit safercar.gov slash kidsbuckleup for more information. When I was little, I didn't talk for a long time. I was sensitive to lights and sounds, so I built secret hiding places where they couldn't get in. Sometimes, I do the same things over and over. Until one day, I found out I had autism. My family got me help. Slowly, I learned how to live with it better. 
Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at AutismSpeaks.org slash signs. Brought to you by Autism Speaks and the Ad Council. Real Talk Radio in the AM. Carl Nelson on 1450 WOL. And thank you for staying with us. We're letting away from the top of the hour. The psychiatrist, Dr. Francis Quest Welsing. Again, I know the call to speak to Dr. Welsing. 800 450 7876. And Dr. Wilson, before we left uh, for, for the uh, break, Brother Jane, D.C., his question was, how can you get this your message across, uh, I guess, concisely to the young people? Well, I would say, first and foremost, with patience. Nobody says to a baby, how come you don't speak English yet? How come you don't speak French yet? How come you don't speak Swahili yet? Do you see what I'm saying? In other words, you have a, a child in your house, a child is born, and you slowly, because you want to help the child learn to speak the language. And so you speak the language to the child. Not in harsh, how come you don't know yet? It's like I have to help the child understand what I understand. It's my determination to help the child understand because if they learn the language of the land, then they will be able to become educated and they will pro progress. So we have to, African proverb, each one teach one, and understand it is our responsibility as a people to teach and educate our children. And somebody who works with young people, I mean, if you have a van or a car, you say, now let, let me drive you around the District of Columbia. We're going to go and look at different neighborhoods. And we're going to go from where we will start with the people who are on the street who are homeless and look and see, well, what do those people look like? What color are they? And then we're going to drive to other parts of the city. We're going to drive to downtown Washington. And who do the, are the people we see now walking on the street briskly with briefcases in their hands and suits and ties? and dress clothes on like they're going to work. And then we're going to drive to other parts of the city where there are beautiful houses. And then we're going to drive to parts of the city where the area has been gentrified in the last few years. And we might even bring out some pictures of how the houses looked two years ago and how they look now. And we're going to look and see bicycle paths that suddenly appear, changing the traffic. And then we're going to look at who are the people on bicycles. So what we are doing is learning about a city, the capital of the United States, and the system. And we might even turn on the television and look in image after image after image after image and face after face after face after face. What do the faces look like? Who are the faces? Do the faces look like us or do they look like the people who are coming in as gentrifiers? So we're learning about how the system is structured, but we cannot, do you see, or we can say, how many white entertainers are singing about gangsters and thugs and bitches and hoes and dogs? How many white entertainers are singing songs about don't like white women? Like we have entertainers talking about black is ugly and you don't want a black woman. So we're just going to slowly and gently study these things. And young people, I'm going to help you understand. I'm going to help you understand first and foremost that you have to love, learn to love and value yourself second to none. 
You have to learn to look in the mirror and see black is beautiful. And you have to learn the behaviors that reflect that you respect yourself. And Mr. Neely Fuller, a black man, gave us some basic codes of behavior that we can really learn from. We're going to stop name-calling one another. We're going to stop gossiping about one another. We're going to stop squabbling with one another. We're going to stop snitching on one another, informing on one another for reasons of personal gain. We're going to stop cursing one another. We're going to stop being discourteous to one another, stop being disrespectful to one another. We're going to stop stealing from one another and stop robbing one another and stop fighting one another and stop killing one another. Now, those behaviors are going to help us respect ourselves and have positive mental health, and it's going to help us begin to be a strong people. And we're going to stop throwing down trash where black people live, work, and play and stop making dirt and filth the norm. We're going to stop using and selling drugs to one another because the enemies of black people have a big thing going now where they're telling black people that drugs are like medicine, but it will really destroy your brain. And we're going to stop black children from thinking that as children they can be adequate mothers and fathers. Really, young people, you're going to have to be really mature to be effective mothers and fathers for black people and to help those children grow up. You've got to help them for 25 years to get on their feet and become educated. Black young people do not deserve to be in prison. But if they're not taken care of by their parents, then they can become prone to doing destructive things and ending up in prison. So we're going to change all of that. We're not going to be believing in welfare. We're going to believe in prosperity. And most important, we are going to stop pretending that racism, which is white supremacy, does not exist. And we're going to become a new people because we know what we were put on this planet to do. Now, that's just an idea about, I mean, I know how I talk to the people in my office about valuing themselves and respecting themselves, even if their parents weren't able to teach that to them. All right, hold that thought right there, John. <laughs> we have a traffic update coming. We got a bunch of folks who want to speak to you all over the country. Who want to speak to Dr. Welsing. 800 450 7876. You two can get in on the conversation. Your calls after this traffic update on 1450. W O L, where information is power. This traffic update is brought to you by the American Association for Cancer Research. We'll start with an accident in Northeast Florida Avenue at 3rd Street, out of loop with a beltway jammed up from 95 as you make your approach to Georgia Avenue. Sluggish on DC 295 southbound between Eastern Avenue and Pennsylvania and stop and go on Suitland Parkway inbound between Silver Hill Road and South Capitol. The American Association for Cancer Research, finding cures together. Please support cancer research by donating today at www.aacrfoundation.com. Dot org. This weather update is brought to you by the American Institute of CPAs and the Ad Council. Understanding your finances is a key to a strong financial future. Learn how to take control of your finances today at feedthepig.org. Today, we expect uh, cooler conditions with a mix of clouds and sun highs reaching the mid-60s. Mostly cloudy this evening, lows near 50. Right now, partly sunny and 51. I'm Tony Thornton for News Talk 1450 WOL, where information is power. Do you want a grainer DC? I do. I'm Edith Shipley, a Pepco customer in Southeast. And I have solar panels because I want more clean energy and because they help me save money. That's also why I support the Pepco Holdings Exelon merger. It'll bring $7 million for renewable energy and energy efficiency programs to the district. 
and the merger will make it easier for customers like me to connect our solar panels to the electric grid. I'm Mark Davis, owner of WDC Solar in Anacostia. The merger will help customers like Edith add renewable energy to their homes. It will also significantly expand solar energy in D.C. and add more than $10 million for the district's Green Building Fund. It's why Edith and I signed the petition supporting the merger. Add your name at PHITomorrow.com. The Pepco Holdings Exelon Merger. Affordability, reliability, and sustainability for D.C. Paid for by Exelon Corporation. Hey, listen, next time you're hungry, stop by Tori's Restaurant. That's right, Northwest V Street and Georgia Avenue, right across the street from Howard University Hospital. Tori's Restaurant. Tori's Restaurant. Now, if you like good food, then this is where you need to be. Tori's Restaurant. They got breakfast all day, low country cuisine, also lump crab cakes, short ribs, and a whole lot more and they got this daily special mondays ask the chef day wednesday beef liver with onions and gravy thursday meatloaf with gravy friday fried whiting with hush puppies two sides bread iced tea lemonade or mix ask about our catering service too go ahead for carry out 202-462-3700 tory's restaurant 700 b street at georgia avenue northwest dc right in front of howard university High Hospital. That's Tory's Restaurant, 202-462-3700. Did you know summer is the deadliest season on the roads for youth in the United States? Each May, youth across the country unite during Global Youth Traffic Safety Month to focus on preventing the leading cause of death for them and their peers, traffic-related crashes. Global Youth Traffic Safety Month empowers youth to lead traffic safety education projects to help protect teen drivers. Become a partner with National Organizations for Youth Safety today at nois.org. WOL Washington, WPRS HD2 Waldorf, WKYS HD2 Washington, WMMJ HD2 Bethesda, celebrating 35 years of service to the community where information is power. The views and opinions of the following show do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of News Talk 1450 WOL, Radio 1 Incorporated, or their management. Welcome to the Carl Nelson Show on Washington, D.C.'s 1450 WOL Radio and live around the world on WOLDCnews.com. My name is Daniel Lewis, folks. I'm in the doctor at the top of the hour. I guess the psychiatrist, Dr. Francis Press Wilson. You've heard about her in her best selling book, The ISIS Papers. The number to call to speak to her is 800 450 7876. Let's go to line one. Jabbar is reaching out to us from Virginia. Jabbar, you're on with Dr. Welsing. Hello, everyone. How y'all doing? Uh, how are you? Good, good. Um, l let me first start off by saying, um, uh, Dr. Welding, um, I, I completely respect you and the work that you've done over the many years. Um, but I, I have some disagreement with you. And let me also say that law governs all things. And in law, words have specific meaning, unlike words that are used in common or slang language. So when you say that um, the problem is racism and white supremacy, to me... I say racism is white supremacy. It, it is, is, is white supremacy right. based on race. Now, race to me, in my investigation of what race means, mm -hmm. race is a species, and man, which includes, quote, black and white, men are a part of that human race. Now, white supremacy, again, in law, words have meaning. And white in law is a status, just like black in law is a status. So white in law is first class, meaning you have superior rights over and above one who is labeled black, which is a second-class citizen. So the next thing is this. Racism, based on those definitions, that the words that you're using, does not necessarily exist. Or if it does exist, it, it exists for a reason. But what really is happening is what I know to be 
called colonialism. And colonialism is when a group of people from another land goes into another part of a, a nation's land, nationalize those inhabitants, take over their resources, and then enslave the natural inhabitants under their system, and then profiting off of the buying and selling of the resources of that of those people's lands. And to me, that is what's happening. And every Can time that we continue to refer to ourselves as black or, or refer to people as black and white, that classifies them as either number one citizens or number two citizens. We, as people who have color to our skin, we are not black people in this land. We are the aboriginal and indigenous people of most of the world. And any time you call us black, you're putting us, you're automatically denationalizing yourself because we have a nationality, just like those who you refer to as white have a nationality. They are Europeans, and their their nation is broken down into French, German, uh, so on. Our nation is broken down into Nigerian, or Moroccan, uh, and so on. And American, that, that's another nationality. So we, we are enslaving ourselves through the use of the words that we, that we speak. And again, law governs all things. And in law, those who are white citizens, which we are in this land, we have certain rights that need to be respected. And when those rights are not respected by another nation of people, not all of them, but certain members of, the, of those, those nations, what is happening is that they are actually stealing our inherent birthright. That's what it is. We, they are stealing our birthright by applying colonialism on this land. And it's not every European that's doing that, but it's enough of them that are that are doing that to us. And the strange thing about it is that there are members of our nation that assist them in doing that. All right. Let's give her a chance to respond, uh, Jabbar. Dr. That, and because of that, you can't say it's white racism over black black people because it's it is a small minority of both nations of people who have gotten together to exploit members of their nation and of the other nations. So right. let's, let's give her a chance to respond on a false premise of black and white. Because you're starting to repeat yourself. Hang on, Jabbar, because you're starting to repeat yourself. So let's give her a chance to respond. Well, I, I think basically what I would just say is that you have an alternative point of view, uh, which is excellent. I encourage you to write about that and to share your point of view with other people. And I have a different point of view. And so that just means that's the victim's guaranteed qualification under a system of oppression to freely express yourself. And so you basically saying, Dr. Welsing, I have a different point of view, and that's fine. You've heard me express mine, and I hear you express yours, but we are not going to be fighting with one another because we are both victims of the people who, on the census material, write that they're white, and that people who have skin color are not white. And so we are, in my view, we are just like the colonizers and the colonized that you were speaking of. The black people are not the colonizers. They are the colonized. And so they are the ones that, in a relative power scale, they are relatively powerless compared to the people who are in power. But again, I encourage you to write and further explicate your point of view and share that with other people. 
But mm-hmm. as black people, we are not going to be squabbling and fighting with each other when we have a common enemy. All right, and Jabal, thanks for your call. And, you know, you can tell when when they don't understand your concept, when they start with white supremacy and not the system. Let's go to line four, though. Carl's calling us from Palm Beach, Florida. Carl, you have a question for the, uh, or comment for Dr. Welsing? Love you, Dr. Welsing. Uh, my focus is somewhat different than what Brother was talking about. When I look at colonization and I look at the global system of white supremacy, I know that it's a global, and it has different connections based upon land masses. And I know that those of us who are non-immigrants here in America, we have a, a, a problem, Dr. Wilson. I want to know how you deal with it. You know, when we integrated the public schools back in 1970, um, we came up with a culture called multicultural. And everybody that was leaders inside of our community stopped speaking specifically to our dynamics. And they started to say, and they even saying today, that they have to speak for everybody. And they are not; these people are not really knowledgeable about the investment that we have made thus far as it relates to us. Because most of the time when we're talking about the gentrification, we're talking about the land masses where uh, the non-immigrant blacks were always located. And these seem to be now some of the most um, sought-after properties of land inside of America, but we still don't seem to have that understanding. My question to you, Dr. Wilson, is how do you deal with the concept of uh, the non-immigrants and the immigrant blacks that are that are taking on the same dynamics, uh, the same conversation, but not utilizing it the same. Way. All right, uh, Carl, thank you for your call. I'll let Dr. Wilson respond on the other side. Ten after the hour, we got to take a quick break for our traffic update right here on 1450. W-O-L, where information is power. This traffic update is brought to you by upsjobs.com. Very heavy volume continues heading northbound on 395 from the Beltway. As you head up and over the 14th Street Bridge, I hope you pack your patience there. DC 295 heavy southbound from Eastern as you head in toward Pennsylvania Avenue, as well as the Beltway out loop between 95 and Georgia and 95 southbound coming down from the ICC. Very heavy in toward the Beltway. Now seeking part-time package handlers in Chantilly to work the sunrise or twilight shift. Package handlers can now graduate debt free with thousands in education assistance. Apply now at upsjobs.com slash radio. This weather update is brought to you by Unbound. Unbound sponsorships fights poverty by strengthening human connections and nurturing interdependency. That's just one way Unbound is different. Learn more at unbound.org. Today, cooler with a mix of clouds and sun. Highs expected around the mid-60s. Right now, partly sunny skies and 51 degrees. I'm Tony Thornton for News Talk 1450 WOL, where information is power. Offer not valid in all states or where prohibited by law. See website for details. Need some extra cash today? Do you have bad credit or maxed out credit cards? If so, turn your radio up. 45cash.com is one of the nation's largest personal loan networks with over 50 different lenders. Now you can get a personal loan for up to $5,000 with no traditional credit check, discreetly from your computer or smartphone, and with no paperwork to send in. That's right, no paperwork whatsoever. Your cash will hit your bank account as soon as tomorrow. And with millions of dollars to lend, our lenders will not perform a traditional credit check. Visit 45cash.com and you can have up to $5,000 in no time. Just have a checking account and a regular source of income, and you could get the loan you need now, regardless of your credit. Go to 45cash.com from your smartphone or computer to get the cash you need. Visit 45cash.com. Type www.45cash.com directly into the address bar. That's 45cash.com. 45cash.com. For all of you who are inspired to create your own unique holiday cards and gifts. For all of you, there's Vistaprint.com. At Vistaprint.com, creating personalized holiday cards is simple. Choose from hundreds of designs and add your own photos and special messages. Right now, all quantity, style, sizes, and stocks are 50% off. Plus, Vistaprint's collection of personalized one-of-a-kind gifts is also up to 50% off. Hurry, offer, and soon. To get this incredible deal, go to Vistaprint.com and enter code CARD50 at checkout. Vistaprint.com, code CARD50. When I was a gang leader, we probably did business together. Because when people like you buy knockoffs on the street, often the money goes to gangs. And gangs use this easy money for other activities. In other words, they're getting a lot of bang for their buck. Counterfeits hurt, but you have the power to stop them. Go to www.ncpc.org forward slash get real. A message from the National Crime Prevention Council and the Bureau of Justice Assistance, U.S. Department of Justice. 
Real Talk Radio in the AM. Carl Nelson on 1450 WOL. I understand that it's 13 after the hour. Psychiatrist Dr. Francis Wes Wilson. Dr. Wilson, I'm going to let you respond to Carl's question. Do you remember his question? Uh, repeat the question. He, he was basically saying, does, does the system of white supremacy affect uh, black immigrants and non-immigrants differently? Uh, you know, my definition of racism is that it's a system for white genetic survival, and that is the fear of white genetic annihilation. And as I understand what is happening, immigrants that are being brought in that are people of color, the color code for white genetic survival is if you're black, get back, brown, stick around, yellow, mellow, white, right. And so people are being brought in who are classified not as black, but as a lighter shade of, you can call it a lighter shade of black because it's all one pigment. It just depends on what you have. So lighter people are being brought in as darker people are being pushed out. And I say it's all related to the full dynamic of white genetic survival that has the color code that all people of color all over the planet have learned. If you're black, get back. Brown, stick around. Yellow, mellow, white, right. Because black has the greatest genetic potential to cause white genetic annihilation. And so the system of racism manipulates the colors. And to me, we have to understand how that manipulation is done and focus on the dynamic of racism, white supremacy, which I say can be collapsed. If you have black people and other people of color, but just as focus on ourselves as black people, that the edifice of racism, white supremacy, is held up by white intention, and then on the other side, black self-hatred. And if black self-hatred is transformed into black self-respect, the edifice of racism, white supremacy, will collapse because that's just one-tenth of the people on the planet Nine-tenths of the people on the planet are people who are classified by white-skinned people as non-whites. And so non-white people and as black people, we're the people with most color on the planet and the most demeaned and degraded. And that's reinforced every day that you turn on the television set. And if we begin to understand that so we counter black self hate and translate that into or turn that, transform that into black self-respect. We will be helping the edifice of racism, white supremacy to collapse. All right. I hope that answers your question, Carl. 800-450-7876-17 after the hour. Let's go to line five. Don is calling us from D.C. Don, you're on with Dr. Wilson. You have a question or a comment? Yeah, um, I, I, you know, because I, I, Friday, I'm, I'm getting ready to write you. Uh, <clears throat> Friday, you know, you can speak with you. You know, I'm gonna write you, and then you can read it. Now, um, the color code that you know, uh, black, black, get back, red, you're dead, brown, stick around, yellow, you're mellow, white, you're right. Now, to comparing uh, and criticizing and comparing the two million men marches, uh, the first one. You had a million people. Very, I was down there. I was walking. I'm in a wheelchair now. That, that, that were very disciplined. No trash. Everybody was silent. No smoking, and had the attention on Farrakhan, which the subject was Sarah 19. Okay. Now, uh, Arthur Maddox, uh, in one of your shows, he, he wasn't invited. Neither was uh, Carl. Uh, 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 what's the name? Uh, Stokely. Uh, uh, you know what I'm talking about. And uh, so they weren't. Now this time to be more effective. To, to nip it in the bud, jump, jump started and nip it in the bud back in the 20s. Since those two couldn't speak, Coakley and, and, and uh, attorney at law, uh, you know, the program then should have been Dr. Do- Dr. Welsing, Neely Fuller, uh, Claude Anderson. Then you could maybe have a few speakers from the pe- uh, people speaking from the people in jail. And uh, the, the the Native American, and then her, what she's saying, what Doctor uh, 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 Needful is saying, 
and what Clark Adams fan would reach so many people than they are reaching them on WL. This should have been, but now this time around, you know, they had people, meaningful people speaking. At the end, it wasn't forceful. And at the time back then, after those prominent people spoke, then they could have talked about the back, uh, a boycott. Right. Actually, actually what's on? Cause we're getting close on, on a break. Let me ask Dr. Wilson. Because we've got to put in a question for him so she can respond. Uh, Dr. Wilson, were you ever invited to, to uh, the Mil- speak at the Million Man marches, any of them? No, I was invited to attend. I just wasn't able to attend, but I wasn't in, I mean, I wasn't going to be one of the speakers. But the point is, is that if we start looking at all of the different efforts, you have different channels and different uh, lines or uh, or channels, I like to say, of people who are using their thinking and they're attempting to move against the problem. And so instead of just, well, I'm going to criticize Dr. Welsing because of this, then whatever thoughts somebody else might have, apply those. Apply those. And so it's like Mao Zedong used to say, let a thousand blossoms bloom, let a thousand flowers bloom that you never have everybody agreeing with the same thing. If each person would apply their effort to the problem. See, Francis Welsing is not the problem. Minister Farrakhan is not the problem. Anybody else is not the problem. The problem is the system of racism, white supremacy, as I see it. Now, we can either continue, like on the plantation, squabbling and fighting with each other, or we can look at the big house and say, now, how can we take power away from the people in the big house? And my effort is we want to transform the system of racism, white supremacy, and replace it with a system of justice. Justice meaning no one is mistreated. No one is allowed to be mistreated. And those who need the most help get the most help. That's what our effort ought to be. You see, and we as black people, whether we like it or not, we're all together at the bottom of the well. No matter what kind of car we drive, what kind of clothes we wear, we're all at the bottom of the well. And just like happened in the Second World War, when a group of people were decided by the system of racism, white supremacy in Germany, that they were going to be exterminated. It didn't matter how much money they had or how much money they lacked. Adolf Hitler, who was running white supremacy in Germany, said, you're not white, and you're going to go into the oven. And that same dynamic, anybody who is confused about what the dynamic is all about, just think about Charleston, South Carolina, and the young white man, Dylan Storm Roof, who sat in a church with nine black people, prayed with them, and after an hour, pulled out a gun and said, I have to kill you because you're black. Wow. Hold that thought right there, Dr. Wilson. We've got to step aside for a couple of announcements. 22 after the hour. Calls next on 1450. W-O-L, where information is power. Attention Medicare beneficiaries, this year's open enrollment from October 15th through December 7th. Consider MedStar Medicare Choice, a $0 monthly premium Medicare Advantage plan brought to you by the local doctors and nurses of MedStar Health. Visit MedStarMedicareChoice.com or call 855-321-3697. Again, that's 855-321-3697. You must continue to pay your Medicare Part B premium. Speak in person with an enrollment specialist at the MedStar Medicare Choice Express. November 18th at Hattie Holmes Senior Wellness Center in Northwest D.C. Those of us who were around in the 50s and 60s struggling, many of us have gotten tired, and we let the enemy have his way. Well, 
I did my best. They'll say, and you all take it now. I'm just going to sit down and relax or retire. I have never seen a lion retire from being a lion. I may not bite as hard as I used to, but I can still bite. Don't miss the Farrakhan Speaks broadcast this and every Sunday at 8 a.m. until 9 a.m. right here on WOL 1450 a.m. where information is power. That's the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan on the air this Sunday at 8 a.m. If you missed last Sunday's message, you have to hear him this Sunday. Don't miss it. I'm Karen, and two very important people in my life, my husband and my father, have been diagnosed with atrial fibrillation. Atrial fibrillation, or AFib, is a type of irregular heartbeat. People with AFib are five times more likely to have a stroke than people without AFib. Talk with a healthcare professional today about your risk and learn how to manage AFib to prevent a stroke. Visit stroke.org slash AFib to learn more. Talk radio in the AM. The number one morning show. Number one on everybody list. Carl Nelson on 1450 WOL. 25 after the hour. 800 450 7876. A lot of folks want to speak to Dr. Wilson from all over the country. On hold, just put in a question for him so Dr. Wilson can respond. Let's go to line two. Pittsburgh Mike is calling us from Columbus. Pittsburgh Mike, your question or comment for Dr. Wilson? Good morning, Carol. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning, Carl. And Ms. Francis, and with love. My question is, Ms. Francis, when you say the system that we live in, a white supremacy, and in order for us to break from it, don't we have to ask care centers when we as black people in every city and town to just what has happened to us? And as long as we attend their schools and believe in their God and everything that they have, because we send our kids, our kids to their institutions of learning. They don't teach us anything about us and our culture. We're like trapped in this thing, and until we get out, uh, we'll continue to do the same thing. Our children, as my father did and his father did, it's like generations and generations, like we're lost, caught up in this thing. We go to, like I said, to their schools and their churches and believe in their God, and yet we don't, uh, the other thing is we don't make demands on what is owed to us. We must start making demands as the 40 acres in a mule. Uh, the uh, Freeman's Bureau Bill, they owe us, but yet and still our fear of death stops us from going to the White House or uh, Washington, D.C. and say it's time to pay. You owe us because we must have something in order to start rebuilding ourselves because if we try to rebuild it through this system, it's not going to happen because this cat has already said, as other callers said, they have conquered the world with their rights, with their will to kill and we know that. They're not afraid to kill us. And they got some of us acting jackass and just like them. And we're not to become like them, but every day we send our kids to school, you're being indoctrinated into the white supremacy system. All right, so that's a fair question, somehow. Pittsburgh Mike. Let's get a chance to respond right. in the essence of time. Uh, Dr. Welsey? What I would say is that if we decide that we want to teach our children something else, that we can do that in the home. Each black family can teach their children to value themselves, to respect themselves, their history as black people. That's what other groups do. Other groups are not demanding that the public school system teach them their specific culture. And black people, you see, we kind of lost ground, we might say, when we thought, okay, we're being integrated into the white world, and all of our needs are going to be taken care of. In the last 50 years, we found out uh, that's not true. And I say integration, when the fear is white genetic annihilation, is a myth, because full integration, if the people started loving and expressing that in the area of sex, white would be genetically annihilated, and this is what 
white people do understand. They understood it back in slavery time, and Abraham Lincoln understood that you can't incorporate genetically dominant people with white people and end up with anything other than everybody being colored. But black people can, based on an understanding, I maintain, of system of racism, white supremacy. It's just like turn on the television set. The television teaches racism, white supremacy. So you turn it on and you see white, 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 white. Then you see a black man trying to climb up a wall. White people are climbing up the wall and getting over. The black man is climbing up the wall and falls off on the ground. And the white people look at each other like, look at that fool. Or the other commercials where black men are talking in a crazy voice. Or if they show small, thin white people, they show big, overweight black people. The the television is the major teacher of racism, white supremacy. Like all of the videos teach constantly. And black people have that little thing in their hand and they're looking at it 24-7. Children are not getting sleep looking at it, being programmed to racism, white supremacy. But if we begin valuing ourselves and understanding what we are determined to teach in our homes, understanding the system of racism, white supremacy, and I say we haven't understood it so effectively, it's like we're going on the football field with a tennis racket and wondering why we don't score because we don't understand what we're dealing with. And we don't understand how we are being systematically programmed when we think we are being entertained. Or all somebody has to tell us is that some star is making millions of dollars. And so whatever that person is doing, black people start emulating it and not understanding that the system of racism is engaging in psychological warfare. But we don't have to make it complicated. We have to just understand the system of racism, white supremacy, is upheld as long as black people do not respect themselves and do not understand the behaviors, the simple behaviors that reflect self-respect and mental health. If we begin to understand that and understand the value and the meaning of being courteous to one another and respectful to one another and not squabbling with one another and not cursing one another and not gossiping about one another and fighting and squabbling, if we begin to learn that, we are transforming ourselves plus an understanding of the system we are dealing with, that each and every time and every minute and every second that we're looking at the television, we are being programmed. Now, if we understand that it's a programming device, a programming for white supremacy, then we can use it for information and use the information and move forward. But if we don't understand that we are being programmed when somebody is training us to to a beat and to a rhythm and to call ourselves bitches and hoes and gangsters and thugs, and then we wonder, well, how come... How come we're not making progress? I can't call myself a bitch in a hole every day and get up and do something constructive. That is impossible. I can't think of myself as a gangster and thug who wants to harm and kill people and do something constructive. So I say so much power is in our hands, so much power to understand so that we simply skillfully, tactically, strategically are not doing those things that help white continue in its supremacy and domination over black and other people of color. 
we can do that with our understanding. If all the non-white people in the world decided, oh, no, we don't harm each other. Nobody can give us a gun and make us harm another person that looks like us. White supremacy will collapse. White supremacy is dependent upon, I teach you to hate yourself. Now, I can do that in several ways. I can have so much chaos going on in your so-called family, the fighting and the squabbling, or if I unemploy fathers so they're not in the home and male children are in despair, I can cause you to kill yourself. And that's some real talk. Hold that thought right there, Dr. Wilson. Folks, <laughs> that is what we call real talk. If you didn't hear anything or understand anything all day, all week, what you just said in a few moments ago, pass that on to your friends. Wow. 26 away from the top of the hour. we got to take a break for the news. We'll come back. More calls from New York, Boston, D.C., California, Philly. All to speak to Dr. Wilson right here on 1450. W.O.L., where information is power. Good morning, I'm Mike Fortier. Here's the latest from NewsOne.com, brought to you in part by the Foundation for a Better Life. Winston Churchill's words stirred his country in the face of defeat. Today they inspire us to reach for our own victories. Commitment, pass it on from the Foundation for a Better Life at Values.com. The Spotsylvania County Sheriff's Office says a 15-year-old student athlete is under arrest for the alleged hazing of two younger classmates in a locker room. The victims, who are 14 and 15 years old, were reportedly hazed and assaulted by older students in October. The suspect, taken into custody, charged with attempted sodomy with an inanimate object and assault by mob. Detectives continuing to search for the other students involved. A memorial to victims of the Paris attacks growing outside the French embassy. Throngs of people showing up to place flowers outside the front gate. D.C. resident Sharon Kaplan among them. We love Paris. We've had wonderful memories of being in that city of light. And uh, I, my heart just hurts. D.C. Mayor Muriel Bowes are also paying her respects on Monday and placing flowers outside the embassy building in Georgetown. Commuters on Metro will see increased security for the unforeseen future. Riders can expect more canine units sweeping through stations and random bag checks. Metro Transit Police Chief Ron Pavlik says riders should notice a stronger security presence in the days and weeks to come. Again, it's that late approach. It's something that we have to do to, again, reassure our riders. The decision for increased security comes from a video released by ISIS that directly threatens D.C. Doctors are giving Governor Larry Hogan a clean bill of health. Hogan says yesterday is 100% cancer-free and in remission. He adds the fight isn't quite over, though. I will begin uh, a monthly ongoing regimen of preventive maintenance to help lower the risk of recurrence. Since being diagnosed with an aggressive form of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma in June, Hogan says he underwent 30 days of round-the-clock chemotherapy, three surgeries, and four spinal taps. This report brought to you in part by Keep America Beautiful and the Ad Council. Give your garbage another life. Recycle. Learn how at IWantToBeRecycled.org. A public service message brought to you by Keep America Beautiful and the Ad Council. I'm Mike Forty. When you're looking for news for Black America, go to NewsOne.com. Good morning, WOL Traffic Update brought to you by UPSJobs.com. Inner loop lineup still. Branch Avenue headed for the Wilson Bridge. Outer loop of the Beltway still going to be sluggish as you make your way north of Andrews. Off and on toward Landover, New Carrollton. Heavy traffic, Outer Loop College Park into Silver Spring, 50. The BW Parkway delays in Cheverly take you down DC 295. With a crash at East Capitol Street blocking the right lane in the backups before you get there, River Terrace. There was another fender bender left side of the roadway. No help there. Unbound sponsorship fights poverty by strengthening human connections on nurturing interdependency. Just one way Unbound is different. Learn more at unbound.org. Your forecast is brought to you by upsjobs.com. We're going to see sunshine, a high of 61 today. Clouds roll in tonight, 52. Cloudy tomorrow with a chance of late day showers, 62. We're 53 now. Now seeking part-time package handlers in Chantilly to work the sunrise or twilight shift. Package handlers can now graduate debt-free with thousands of education assistance. Apply now, upsjobs.com slash radio. Beverly Farmer, News Talk 1450, WOLAM, where information is power. Your voice can now be heard. Y'all ready? Yeah. Yeah. With Carl Nelson weekdays from 6 to 10 a.m. on 1450 WOL. And thank you for saying this 23 away from the top of the hour. It's Dr. Francis Press. Well, singing. She just cleared the bases there that a home run. 800 450 7876 is the number to call. Speak to her. Let's go to line three. Eric's calling us from New York. Eric, do you have a question or a comment for Dr. Welsing? Yeah, I have a quick question. Uh, good morning. Um, good morning. According to findings by one Damien Labuda 
L-A-B-U-D-A from the University of Montreal, Department of Pediatrics and the CHU St. Justin Research Center. Uh, I'm not sure that's where that is. I would take it in Canada. Uh, the findings were quickly anybody that is non-African uh, is in possession of between, on average, 1% and 4% DNA of the Neanderthal species, and it can be all the way up to 20%. Um, do you think, uh, well, A, uh, are you familiar with this information? Uh, I'm not sure how old it is. There's no date, but there's many different sources on the web uh, where it comes up, some uh, some mainstream media sites and some uh, smaller websites. But my question is, uh, could this difference in DNA, even if it's slight, be a cause for their behavior? Uh, when, I, when I say they, I mean all non-Africans. Uh, I would extend the white supremacy attitude to people that are classified, you know, as other than European. If you go to places like the Philippines or Thailand, they, you know, the women wear sweatshirts and big hats so they won't get suntanned. Uh, I had a friend of mine that dated a Japanese woman and said she wouldn't let him pull back his uh, convertible because she didn't want to get suntanned. So is, is this behavior uh, against people that are considered African, uh, you know, could this be because – you know, we're actually not all part of the human race, but some of us are actually Neanderthal, Homo sapien hybrid. And that's well, the that's reason for their well, behavior. Yeah. Dr. Wilson? Uh, let me say this, that all people on the planet are derivative from black people in Africa. And well, so, uh, I'm sorry to jump in, but it's saying that uh, that there was more interbreeding with the Neanderthal than we thought. And uh, most of this breeding, I think, took place in, in the Middle East. Excuse me for cutting you off, but I, I forgot to add that in there. Okay. In other words, the details that you're talking about, I'm not familiar with to comment on it. But just to simplify that everybody came from black people who are on the continent of Africa. And so you may have different variations as people move and leave Africa, but the parent stock of all the human beings on the planet, keep it simple, were black people. Now, when people try to say, think about, I mean, you might have people who classify themselves as white, some who try to say, well, I, I really wasn't descended from African people. There's some other group of people that I was descended from, uh, so I don't have to think about my ancestry being black and my being a mutation from black people. And so there are all kinds of uh, discussions going on in that area, but I just say keep it simple. And our problem with racism and white supremacy is the fear of white genetic annihilation that was stated very clearly when Dylan Stormroot killed the black people in the church in Charleston, South Carolina, where he talked about, I have to kill you because you're black, and I have to kill you because black men want to have sex with white women. And that is cold discussion for fear of white genetic annihilation, the same dynamic that caused thousands of black men to be lynched and castrated in earlier decades in this system of racism and white supremacy. White is a genetic recessive trait. Black is a genetically dominant trait. And if you understand that and begin to understand its implications, you will understand everything that is happening to black people, even the massive incarceration of black men and taking black men out of the communities and out of their family life that is really heading black people towards genocide. When a group of people are fearful of their genetic annihilation, they seek to consciously and or subconsciously impose genocide on those people. And I say that's what we need to focus on and need to understand what is happening to us as a people because of the base genetics of what white actually means, white in genetic literature, 
means a genetic deficiency state because of the absence of the enzyme tyrosinase, so people cannot make the normal melanin that is in the skin of normal human beings. And so for people who don't have it and their war to survive against the fear of their genetic annihilation is what racism and white supremacy is all about. I pray that we can begin to understand it so that we can begin to see clearly what is happening to us and understand what it is that we must do to save ourselves and help ourselves advance and be who we are supposed to be on this planet. All right, 800-450-7876, away from the top of the hour. Let's go to line one. Sali is calling us from Boston. Sali, you're on, you have a question for Dr. Welsing or a comment? Yes, good morning, Brother Carl, Dr. Welsing. Um, many of us have had that uh, moment of clarity, Dr. Welsing, where uh, you have explained many times as you were searching for the answer to uh, questions that you had regarding the condition of black people, and you heard, uh, Mr. Fuller explained it as a system, and then a light bulb went off to you. Many of us have had that uh, similar experience, maybe not as acute, but definitely a similar experience, a moment of clarity when we heard you, when we heard Dr. Fuller, uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Fuller, when we heard um, uh, Dr. Amos Wilson, uh, Dr. Joy DeGru, and so on and so forth, to really, I, I would say, um, solidify um, the fact that we have, we now have the answer to what uh, the major problem is for the entire globe, but for black people in particular. I see now, Dr. Wilson, in, in the refinement of the system of racism, white supremacy, that um, uh, sexual degeneracy and sexual confusion has kind of taken the pole position as the primary device that the purveyors of the system of right, racism, white supremacy are using. You mentioned many times uh, empire and scandal and how sexual degeneracy and homosexuality are played out in these, um, these devices. My question, Dr. Wilson, I had a conversation earlier, uh, sorry, last week um, on Carl's show uh, with the sister Fahima, I think her name was, where she was, in my estimation, advocating for the, uh, I would say, the incorporation of, uh, of homosexuality or homosexuals with the, uh, the, the, I would say, the plight of black people, something that I'm not much in favor of. Could you explain, Dr. Wilson, the, the relationship psychologically between a mentality complicit of homosexuality and one complicit with racism, white supremacy? All right. Uh, thank you, Sally. Thank you for your call. we got to step aside for a quick break. I'll let Dr. Wilson respond on the other side. Folks, you two can join the conversation. Reach out to us at 800-450-7876. Your calls after the short break on 1450 WOL, where information is power. Looking for a caterer to cater your next event? One that's professional prepares great tasting food, provides a professional staff, and will create tailor-made menus and services to fit your needs and budget and so much more, then you have to call a Touch of Class Caterers at 301-449-2082. For 18 years, a Touch of Class has been one of the Washington metropolitan area's premier caterers, providing you nothing but the best for your next event. So whether it's a wedding, rehearsal dinner, church function, repast celebration, or just a private dinner for two, and you want a little more class and elegance to make the day even more special, call a Touch of Class Caterers today at 301-449-2082 and let them take care of the intimate details. That's a Touch of Class Caterers, ready to handle your next event with a Touch of Class and elegance. Call them today, 301-449-2082 or log on to www.we-cater-2u.com. 
When the need arises for a funeral repast or a place to hold a memorial service for your loved one, call the New Horizon Hall of Elegance, located at 2209 Varnum Street, Mount Rainier, Maryland. They will take the worry out of you having to handle one more detail, giving you time to focus on family and friends. Call 301-277-5922 to find out more. That's 301-277-5922. That's the New Horizon Hall of Elegance, ready to serve you in your time of need. Let's go inside the mind of a 10-year-old. I should have worn those earrings today. I like those earrings. Gabby has those awesome earrings. I need to ask her where she got those, but that's just what she would want me to do. I'll have Michaela ask her for me. Buckle up, Sarah. Yeah, but then Michaela will be like, why don't you just ask her yourself? That's just like Michaela. Sarah, buckle up. Michaela is such a great name. I wish I was called Michaela. There's like a dozen Sarahs in my class. Hey, we're not hitting the road until you buckle up, honey. Oh, yeah. Seatbelt. I forget sometimes because my brain is, like, busy, you know? I wonder if there's pizza at school today. Sometimes it can be tough to get through to your kids, but it's not impossible. Always make sure they're wearing their seatbelts, even on short drives. Remember, you have the keys, you have the power. Never give up until they buckle up. A message from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Visit safercar.gov slash kidsbuckleup for more information. The University of Maryland Eastern Shore Washington Metro Alumni Chapter will host their 25th annual Hawk Recruitment Reception, open to all high school students and their parents in the Washington Metro area. Learn about UMES and its academic programs. Talk with the president, student leaders, and receive on-the-spot admission decision information. Light refreshments will be served. For more information, contact Monica K at WMAA reception at gmail.com to reserve your spot today. Real Talk Radio in the AM. Carl Nelson on 1450 WOL. I think you're staying with us in our guest, Dr. Francis Chris Wilson. Just want to remind you, coming up uh, later this week, Dr. Donna Murch is going to be here. She's a historian and a professor from Rutgers University. Also, Craig Hewlett's going to be here. We're going to find out what's going on on the international front, especially what happened in Paris. And also, the man with the plan, Dr. Claude Annis, is going to stop by as well. Tell your friends to lock us in here at 1450 WOL. And again, if you missed any of the shows, just go to the WOL website, WOL DC News, and just put in the Carl Nelson podcast. In the search bar on the top right-hand corner, you can get a copy and, you know, pass it on to some of your friends. But anyway, let's go back to Dr. Wilson. Dr. Wilson, you want to respond to what uh, uh, Sadi was saying from Boston? Right. Uh, Let me say that the fear of white genetic annihilation, which is what the system of racism, white supremacy is all about, that this fear will cause the social structuring to affect Epidemic black male effeminization or psychological uh, castration. In other words, if we begin to understand deeply what the system of racism and white supremacy is as a power system dynamic, and the fear of white genetic annihilation perceives the black male as the threat to white genetic annihilation. And so the dynamics within, through economics, education, entertainment, labor law, politics, religion, sex, and war, all of those aspects of the system working together are affecting black male effeminization. See, if the black male is turned into a female, then there doesn't have to be the fear of white genetic annihilation. Females are not the threat to genetic annihilation because females cannot impose sexual intercourse. But males are perceived as a threat. And we have to understand, and this is not homophobia, talking about the dynamics of altering genetic orientation, uh, gender orientation. This is happening dynamically within the system, and whether it is accomplished uh, through chemicals in the warfare, in the food, or chemicals in the water. But we do, we are seeing epidemic levels of male effeminization, black male effeminization. 
and this can be understood logically as a consequence of the fear of white genetic annihilation, just as I said earlier, when there was open, you can, if a black man thought about thinking about a white woman, he could be lynched and castrated, his genital apparatus destroyed. And so now you're in more sophisticated times, and it can be done by other means. But when you remove males massively from community life and family life, even that alone can lead towards a feminization of males. I had a patient tell me that a three-year-old child, male child, said to a man, he, the child was introduced to the male, this is your father. And the little child said to him, you can't be my father. You didn't teach me how to stand up and go to the toilet like a boy. Imagine a three-year-old. You see, but the father wasn't with the family because of unemployment and all kinds of other dynamics that are taking place in our community. And so, again, I would want for those people who understand what I'm talking about to delve deeper into an understanding of this historic dynamic. It's not different. It's been the same for 500 years what the goals, objectives are. And if we begin to understand, we can change. But, Carl, before I get off, I want to say this. Somebody showed me on the Internet where somebody said Dr. Welsing was married to a German, a Kraut, and so I'm offering $25,000 in cash for anybody who can prove that I was married to a German. I was married to a Ghanaian from West Africa. So this rumor is being repeated, whether it's being done uh, by uh, racist, white supremacists, or whether it's being done by self-hating black people. But I'm just saying, you can get $25,000 cash from Dr. Welsing if you think you can prove that I was married to a Kraut or a German. So I'm just laying that <laughs> out there. Uh, and people just trying to discredit you, Dr. Welsing. But uh, we know what the real deal is. Right. Eight hundred four five zero seven eight seven six. Should we get another call real quick on line four, Mo in DC? Mo, can you make it quick for us? Yes, yes. Uh, good, good morning, uh, Doctor Welsing, and good morning, uh, Mister Nelson. Good morning. Thank you very much for the opportunity to uh, speak on the show this morning. Um, I have a, I have a, uh, a quick comment to uh, to basically help those who uh, have have trouble understanding the system of white supremacy. I recommend that they read the book, The Rising Tide of Color against white world supremacy by Dr. Lothrop Stoddard, Ph.D. at Harvard. Uh, the book was published in 1921. Uh, it has an introduction by Madison Grant, who was the chairman of the uh, society, uh, uh, the New York Zoological Society, and trustee of the American Museum of Natural History. I'm just going to give a few. Oh, the, well, uh, I'm sorry, we, we, we're out of time, but I thank you for it. recommending that book for us. Dr. Wilson, you, are you still teaching at Howard? Uh, the, right, the second Thursday of every month, uh, 7 to 10 p.m. in the Blackburn Center, and it's a free lecture. All right, Open thank you, Dr. Welsing.